Well, we did it, folks. We made it to the end of 2022, and I know some of you didn't think we were going to get there. I don't know that I was going to get here, both that I'm still alive and that the channel is still going. 2022 has been a whirlwind year, both in terms of gaming and at the channel. Today, we're going to be focusing on, for our final video of 2022, the channel, the community, and yeah, maybe even stuff we are going to have going on in 2023. We're going to go over a bunch of stats and numbers for those that like to have numbers from the channel because you don't get yearly numbers from me pretty much more than once or twice per year. And then we're going to go over how our content has evolved and just a lot of other things because 2022 is the year I went full time on YouTube. That's right. There are no other sources of revenue for me personally than things related to the YouTube channel as a content creator. So let's first recap a bunch of things. Uh, I have lots of people to thank along the way, but we'll get to that after we go over the numbers. Let's dive into the numbers for those of you that like numbers. So we reached 4.6 million viewers this year, and it's the most we have ever reached in channel history. This topped our best year ever, which was previously 2021, where we reached 4.1 million viewers. But the crazy thing about this was we weren't anywhere near this pace. We weren't until this month because almost half of those views came during the month of December with 2.2 million views in the month of December of 2022. Why? Well, let's talk about our content and the changes that have happened. Our most watched content of the year is a YouTube short. That's right, we make YouTube shorts now. We weren't doing that until about two months ago. And it's a YouTube short about Mario Kart that we released in December of 2022. It has 1.1 million views and it was posted i believe on december 5th or 6th the crazy part is even if we eliminated that short december would still be the most views the channel has ever had in a month ever folks over 900,000 views without that short that is awesome now our top three most watched standard videos so we can go over shorts now they're relatively new i think we'll have more information on shorts in 2023 but our top three most watched standard videos in 2022 are as follows how to download free games on nintendo switch at 41,000 views tears of the kingdom news just dropped a video that was from this month at 36,000 views and of course a rumor about the wind waker and twilight princess arriving on switch from earlier this year i think around july with around 25,000 views what a surprise folks um a how-to guide and oh zelda man you guys like zelda who knew couldn't tell by the views on the Tears of the Kingdom content over the last couple of weeks at all, could I? Yeah, Zelda's sort of a thing we all enjoy together. It is my favorite franchise after all. So no surprise that my audience tends to really watch the Zelda content more than anything else. Who knew? All right, next up, we'll go over our top three most watched live streams of the year. Uh, the most watched live stream of the year was actually our live coverage of the Nintendo February Direct of 2022 at 9,719 views. Next up would be the Prime Gaming Fest event for the Game Awards in 2022. Well, this just happened this month at 9,525 views with our summer Prime Gaming Fest kickoff live stream in third place at 9,492 views. Now our top viewed podcast episode of the year is actually episode 38 with 3,996 views on the live version of it, but we actually had a re-uploaded version on a second channel that did 3,200 views, putting in at over 7,000 people having seen that episode. However, that's not our most listened to audio episode as that was actually episode 36 with 1,222 people listening in on various apps and devices with Apple Podcasts being the number one podcast app. All right, next up, we had a net gain of 5,800 subscribers in 2022. And I did say net gain. That means we actually had about 9,000 new subscribers, but we did lose 30,200 subscribers 
uh, that we previously had. Based on numbers I've looked over the years, losing anywhere from three to 4,000 subscribers per year seems to be pretty normal. Some of this is just YouTube purging people. Some of this is just people don't enjoy the content anymore. What are you going to do? Obviously, as a content creator, you just want to gain more than you lose. We did do that in 2022. It was a significant drop off from 2021 when we had over 15,000 new subscribers. But again, uh, net new subscribers, by the way. But again, that we got hacked at the end of the year and we had a really rough start and we really only recovered quite recently. All right. That all being said, that's Nintendo Prime by the numbers in 2022. But what's more interesting to me is how the content has evolved. And to understand that, here's a snippet of our first video in 2022. Two, just blowing my mind because I never in a million years thought we'd see this game again. I had hope, but we're going to see it. So GoldenEye back in the day. Okay, you can see some differences. First, though, before we talk about that, how about a snippet of our Nintendo Prime podcast first episode of 2022? As always, Mr. Nathaniel Rumpeljance, and to my left, my immediate left, in the middle, is Mr. Eric Moore. Hello, everybody. Awesome, man. And then way over, even even, even further that way, like past Eric, like if, I, if I just knock his mic over, <laughs> yeah, right. is someone that uh, maybe some of our very, very oldest subscribers <sighs> might remember. Right. He's been on this channel before, technically, a mm -hmm. long time ago when he, I think he worked under me officially. I think that was like the official order of things. Mr. Zeon, how's it going, buddy? I'm doing great, Nate. And nope. Nate, you're, muted. You're, no, he's not muted. No. He's not muted. We can't hear him. Nice. Cool. Nope, I'm good now, right? Uh, now yeah, you're good. Now hey. you're good. Hey. Maybe you were muted. Now hey. happening. I was. I was I was muted on my own. By my own. And now, here's our most recent episode of the Nintendo Prime Podcast. Link's Awakening. The new one. Mm, no, don't don't put that in my head. Don't yeah. put that yeah. in my yeah. head. Yeah. Exactly. No, 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 yo, 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 Mm -hmm. awesome. Awesome. Amazing yeah. Idea. Awesome. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, community uh, movement I'm behind. Out my theory for, 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 for Eric's now. I'm, I'm not gonna talk anymore. I'll let you guys. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> now my idea feels. That like just that just right came right. out of no. I wasn't even thinking about yeah. that. Wow. Yeah, that's I, was, I was motioning while you were doing your video earlier today. I was motioning like. Oh, I know. I, I saw you doing that, and I was like, "Is he like <laughs> trying to play with Legos? What no. is he doing over there? <laughs> Dungeon builder." Can you yeah. imagine if they actually like because like dungeon building in 2D for Link's Awakening was like okay? I'm not sure, obviously, if you feel like things have gotten better from the start of the year to the finish, but I do think that we have at least made some steps in the right direction to be sure. So I keep glancing down at my notes, make sure that I don't forget anything. Look, 2022 has been an incredible year, and I have a lot of people that I want to thank for this. First off, is you guys, the viewer. If you guys weren't watching, liking, subscribing, commenting, super chatting, uh, becoming members, gifting memberships, um, supporting on Patreon for those of you that do support us on our hardly ever mentioned Patreon channel, uh, you know, subscribing to a new podcast channel, then coming back to this channel for the podcast, really muddling the podcast in general because of it, because YouTube changes how their algorithm works. Guys, I am just so appreciative of each and every one of you. Those of you that stuck through through the lean years and those of you that are sticking through to today. I think that 2022 was honestly our most consistent year to date, both in terms of content volume. We uploaded over 311 videos and had over 130 live streams. Guys, that's over 400 pieces of content, not counting the 44 shorts, at least at this time, that we have also done as well. That is a lot of content in a single year for a solo content creator. That's that's just I, I I look at I think about those numbers and I just my mind is blown. How how the hell did I pull that off? And most of the year I wasn't even full time. So really, how did I pull it off? This is what I'm talking about when it comes to just being so thankful. If it wasn't for all of you guys watching, we wouldn't be here. There was even a point this year where I contemplating shutting things down. Obviously, we all know the world's trying to recover from COVID and 
there's sort of a, a worldwide recession happening and I'm not going to act like it hasn't impacted me. We did make less revenue on YouTube this year than last year. Not, I wouldn't say by a significant margin, but obviously when you're hoping to grow and you're doing it full time now, you're kind of hoping to see better numbers, but we didn't. And that's okay. And it became okay due to your guys' support. So thank you so much just for liking these videos. I know there's many of you out there that are extremely critical of everything I do. But even I want to thank you because you guys help drive me to create bigger and better content. Um, the people just screaming clickbait, however, they, they don't always help. But the ones that provide actual useful feedback, uh, even if I disagree with you at the time, it, all of it sits in the back of my mind and helps me improve the content. Now, there's been a lot of changes, obviously, just in terms of equipment that we've used. Uh, <laughs> Well, we got new microphones, as you can tell, and a new audio setup over here that's been uh, really driving us in the second half of the year. And yeah, we have a new set, obviously, compared to the beginning of the year, and so much more. In fact, this set's going to be evolving even in 2023. We haven't really hit the final evolution of what this is going to look like. Uh, this this little drape thing back here that was actually from, from E3 Extravaganza 2021 is going to be gone some point next year, and we're going to have some... So, so, so uh, uh, just Let's just say a better-looking backdrop back there that can have a little variety to it. Uh, we added a giant screen over here, which you guys can sort of see in this video, at least. It's not visible on every video. Um... I, what I'm going to do with this screen in the future is still a little a little up in the air. There, There is a goal of mine to eventually have the screen uh, be in almost every video, at least my standard videos. But the set right now isn't really set up for this. Originally, when we installed this TV, it was about uh, the podcast. Well, now we're sort of changing how that podcast works. So meaning I sort of need to change how the set works again. Um so yeah, we'll see if the TV is going to be part of the set. I just have to see how I want to handle things. I don't know that I really like the way things are set up now. Basically, we I, I want an entirely new desk. These are like Amazon really cheap tables put together. We'll see what, what happens with the desk situation in 2023. But look, guys, I'm just, I, I got so many people to thank. Uh, Mike Odyssey. Um Words cannot express how important he has been, uh, both financially, literally, um, as a friend, as a supporter of the channel, um, as someone to just bounce ideas off as him and I are on this YouTube journey, trying to figure out how both of us can go full time, how we, how we can make this stuff work, uh, what works on YouTube, what doesn't work on YouTube, what hurts our channels, what helps our channels, um, Mike Odyssey is an incredible human being, incredibly kind. He never pushes his ideals or his um, in any of his own agendas onto me. All he ever does is push and inspire me to do my best, even, even when uh, we might not see eye to eye on something or maybe uh, I say something that might annoy him. <laughs> uh, he knows. He, he's aware of what, what moments those were. Some of you guys might be aware of some of those moments as well. Um He's understanding, and uh, I, I, I couldn't ask for a better uh, somewhat partner in crime here on YouTube. Um, so thank you so much for helping inspire me uh, through some of the changes to some of my hardships and uh, hopefully inspire us on our goals for 2023. Obviously, a big thank you to my fiance for all of her support and for now helping me manage sponsorships and other things at the channel, helping me manage the Prime Gaming Fest and getting all that stuff shipped out, and just helping support what I do. She is the number one support system I have in what I'm doing here on YouTube, and I would be remiss if I didn't thank my fiance, Yulia. You know I love you, um, and thank you for letting me chase my dream because I don't know any other person I could possibly be with that would be crazy enough to let me try to chase this dream. Uh, while raising three children at the sort of money I'm making right now. It's thank you so much. We're, we're going to be, I think there's big things coming in the future for this channel. Uh, next up, I want to be sure that I thank Eric Moore. Uh, I know some of you guys, I get calls from people sometimes to replace Eric on the podcast because he's not the most knowledgeable about gaming. Like as much as people 
chastise me and say, I don't play enough games or I, I don't this or I don't that. One thing that is pretty consistent, at least when it comes to our podcast where, uh, where Eric is there, is it becomes very apparent uh, who pays attention to all the news, who actually plays these games versus a person who maybe plays a game a year and doesn't pay attention to all the news, which happens to be Eric, where he plays usually two, maybe three games total per year. I'm playing dozens of games a year. So as much as people can criticize me that I didn't spend 500 hours in Splatoon 3 and I didn't put 200 hours in the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and, you know, that uh, for some reason I, I, I beat things like Kirby in the Forgotten Land and 100% of that but didn't 100% Mario Strikers or something. Look, it's weird, but the thing is I at least play all the games and I understand that people get really perturbed sometimes that Eric doesn't seem to know a lot or have a lot to say. But here's the deal. I couldn't do the podcast, nor could I do what I do here without Eric's support. He's not only been, again, another financial backer of the show, helping purchase equipment and other things around here to keep things going. Yes, he gets paid back, of course, but the point is he does help things keep going. I also would be remiss if I didn't mention how much he pushes and motivates me as well. Um, he helped build all the sets here. We have a set over there, if you guys remember, that we were playing around with earlier this year with the neon Nintendo Prime uh, sign on there. That set's going to come back. I've got plans. I've got plans. I just don't know when we're going to get to that set. But I've got plans for that set, and he helped build that set over there. He helped build this set over here, the TV in the background, um, all the cable management, which sadly is going to have to be redone at some point and we'll talk about this um soon here in this video he's been a big mental support he's gone to all the big uh, events with me e3s and stuff like that and, and been someone to hold a camera someone to help drive me uh to make the best content i can and do everything he can to try to at least make things as easy as he possibly can on me he's even offered to try to edit videos haven't gotten to the point where i feel comfortable enough with him editing videos uh, especially since he volunteers his time uh, as my best friend. But um, I do appreciate him. And who knows? Maybe there'll be an episode in 2023 where he's got to run the podcast, not me, um, because I maybe won't be here for one reason or another, you know, like a wedding. We'll see what happens. Uh, so there's just a, a lot to, 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 to thank. A lot of people I'm probably forgetting to mention, the numerous content creators who guested it on our podcast, Hoops and Hip Hop and Player Essence and um, Andres Restart, uh, Sumbro Nation, HMK, uh, Jake Randall, and yeah, Linz, and, and so many others. I mean, there's been we, this is the year that we had the most guests ever on our show, and pretty sure 2023 is going to top that if you saw our most recent episode of the podcast and what we're aiming for in 2023. So I, I'm just... I'm really thankful for all the support. I'm thankful for all the viewers. I'm thankful for uh, my children uh, who also support what I do. They actually think it's really cool. Their dad's a YouTuber. Even if I make the kind of content they're not going to watch, they don't even care about the shorts I make. They're more interested in like Minecraft or, you know, cooking grandma or something. I don't know the kind of crap they watch, but they do know that I have an audience. They do know that people care about the content I make and that, for some people, it, it helps them out. I don't know how. I'm just reporting news. I'm just a random guy in his mid-30s talking about video games. But apparently, it, I, you know, I've been told anyways by others that it's helpful for them, uh, both information-wise, discussion-wise, distractions, or whatever. The interactions on live streams, the numerous times we've had calling guests, whether it's Charles Trudell or, uh, let me see, Joycey J. Gosh, uh, I think E. Primify has called in. Uh, Corey's called in once and, and so many others. I mean, I, I'm, I apologize if I'm forgetting everyone who's called in during our live shows. Uh, I appreciate all of you guys for uh, chiming in and helping me entertain the masses as well uh, and just good in some one-on-one -on -one discussions. So you guys are amazing and I couldn't do any of this without you. And obviously now it's time where we sort of shift things and talk about what do I want to do? What are some of my goals with this channel? In 2023. So in 2022, thanks to a late surge in the year, we did get to 80,000 subscribers. Which, uh, honestly, I was I was aiming for 90,000 this year, but that was before I really understood how much getting hacked in 2021, late in 2021, was going to affect us. 
So the fact that we were able to turn things around and hit 80,000 subscribers was absolutely incredible. And maybe I'm a dreamer. Maybe it's just because I'm doing YouTube full time. I don't know. But I think 100,000 subscribers is in the cards in, in 2023. Maybe that's nuts, but I feel like we're pretty close to 83,000. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I think getting 17,000 new subscribers in 2023 is totally doable. We hit 15,000 in 2021. And if I, I really hit on this thing with this balance of shorts and regular content and live streams and podcasts, I kind of feel like this is doable. I kind of feel like it's sustainable. I think we've hit on something and I sort of know what I'm doing on YouTube now. Maybe. Uh, so maybe it's a pipe dream. Maybe I never get to 100,000 subscribers. Certainly Social Blade doesn't think I'll hit it for like three years or whatever that's worth. But uh, I think 100,000 is in our cards next year. And who knows? Maybe beyond. I, I'm not going to go into other projections like, oh, we hit 110, 120, 125. No, nah, I have no idea. Some channels do blow up insanely fast, even after they've been really slow growing for many, many years. And some channels never do it. So I'm, I'm just going to say it's sort of a goal I have is to see if we can get 100,000 subscribers together in 2023. Um, setting that aside, there's a lot of other just minor goals. Like I would like to see the average views for per video, which according to YouTube this year, our average views for per video are right around 4,000 views a video, which it's actually pretty good. Uh, it, it's not quite where we were in 2021. We were at 5,500, but remember we got hacked and we had to deal with a lot of um, suppression of our content until lately. So I think it's realistic that if we go with 17,000 new subscribers, um, and that we're not really being suppressed, I would say, or suppressed as much anymore. Plus, we got a Zelda game coming, and I don't know if you guys love Zelda. So, I would say it's a bit ambitious, but I would like to see us double that and get to an average of 8,000 views a video. Maybe maybe we can do better. You know, I wanted to say 10, but I'm going to be a bit conservative and say let, let's, let's see if we can double that to 8,000 by the end a 2022. If we don't get it in the beginning, that's fine. But if we can, if we can hit 8,000 per, per video by the end, you know, for like that last month of November, December, we're getting 8,000 views almost every video. That would be great. It also allows me to post a, a more wide variety of content, right? Like, yeah, our Zelda videos can maybe hit 8,000, but would it be nice if any news video I make could, could do that or any discussion video? So that's sort of a, a, a goal I have. Another goal I have is to simplify my setup. Uh, I probably run the most complex setup on YouTube for a solo content creator. This might not seem so complex to when you have teams of people. I don't have teams of people. I got a Stream Deck XL, a, a Rodecaster. I got all this stuff to manage things, and I'll still use those. But things like right now I do everything off of a single computer, right? Yeah, I have my, my laptop here that I sometimes do some screen shares of for podcasts and shows. But... I do all my editing, all my live streaming, all my content creation, running of all the various equipment. All of it's done with a single computer, uh, and it's quite taxing. I mean, there I believe when I was counting the other day um, with expansion cards and everything else, I have over 30 cables running off my computer. That's insane. Most of you guys don't even have the ability to plug in 30 cables to your computer. I do. That's insane. It's really taxing on the computer, too. Uh, what I would like to do is basically get an editing only machine. So I would like to take my current machine and basically relocate it to a uh, part of the set that you guys won't see. Um, get rid of a lot of the cables and cable extensions and runs I have across the ceiling and on the floor and uh, simplify things a bit and bring that computer over here to be literally nothing but a base station that manages my live streams. And then I'll do all the actual content editing and stuff on a separate computer. And of course, the computer I'm thinking of getting is a Mac Studio of some type uh, sometime in 2023. Uh, it's just, I, I got to start making uh, decisions that are best for content creation. And at this point, Mac Studio, it's a no brainer for content creation over PCs. I'll always love PCs, I'll always build PCs, I'll always do my thing. And yes, I'll always have at least one cable running to my big monitor uh, from this you know, current PC so I can do some PC gaming and stuff. But um, Mac Studio is, is definitely something I want to add 
uh, to help simplify things. More than that, I, I would like to upgrade our main camera. This camera um, has been serving me well for a year and a half, and it's fine for the most part. It has some autofocus issues at times. I think I've solved a lot of the autofocus issues as much as I can for now, uh, but it is a thing. And, and I, I just want to maybe do something about this uh, in the future. I also want to add more lighting. Right now, the entire set is basically lit by two lights I have mounted on the ceiling. But when we do angle shots like this, we don't have any side lighting. So sometimes it's darker over here, lighter over here. So I'd like to have another light, like maybe up here and up there, where there's like a light shining this way and a light shining this way to get Eric's face or however we redesign the set. Uh, when we get our new desk and whatever lighting we think we need for that. So yeah, so, so yeah, new lighting and uh, a new camera. I, I rented a camera for our Prime Gaming Fest. I, I actually, that's the exact camera. It's a Sony Alpha uh, Mark II or Mark IV. I don't remember what it is. I got to go look it up again. But that camera with the $2,500 lens we rented as well is exactly what I want for this studio uh, as our main shooter. And then this camera uh, would become a secondary camera which would be great. And then our uh, trackable webcam would be there for more dynamic shots. So <sighs> it's crazy, man. Why am I talking about purchasing like $10,000 in equipment in 2023? You don't need the level of equipment I'm talking about to do what I do on YouTube. Part of what drives me, one, I'm a tech enthusiast, but part of what drives me is always finding ways to make things better and more streamlined, both in terms of video quality, audio quality. Although we, we sort of hit our peak, I think, with audio quality for now. I would like a, a boom mic at some point that is in the back of my mind, but not. we're still, we're still paying off these mics and our, our audio here. Until that's paid off, I'm not going to worry about boom mics and stuff. Uh, but that might be something we add to the set down the line. I... I just, I, I always strive to make things easier and more proficient and more efficient because I'm a solo content creator. And I, as you saw, I'm producing a crap load of videos. A lot of other solo content creators uh, that don't have as crazy of a setup as I do, um, one, they're not making as many videos. Two, the ones that are, are a lot more successful and have separate editors and everything handling a lot of stuff. Whereas I have to handle everything. There is nobody else that handles any of this stuff but me. So it might be complicated. It might be weird. It might be funky. It might not be the best way to do things, but it's how I do things. And yes, one thing I don't do want to improve on is my editing. Uh, one thing that prevents me from doing a lot of complicated edits is even though I have a pretty decent editing computer, I don't know what it is, but Premiere just really bogs down when I do more complicated edits. And it bogs down in a way where even when I render out certain specific sections, um, it's not a problem or like it becomes, it's still a problem. I don't know. It's weird. Now to talk about some more personal goals. This feels like a cop out. People say this every year, right? I'm going to lose weight this year. I'm going to hit my target. I'm going to this. I'm going to that. I had this goal and I talked about it on video a year ago, heading into the 2022 of losing weight. Um, but I got injured and I didn't really talk a whole lot about it, but I, I, I did get injured and uh, it, it didn't allow me to get off to the right start in 2022. And then by the time things started getting better, uh, summertime, you know, you're still in your bad habits. It's hard to get out of everything. You have a bad routine because you've been kind of laid up. And now we, 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 we get into 2023 and currently I'm feeling great. Uh, I, I don't have any injuries, so I don't have any excuses. Um, it's time to get serious about weight loss. It's not okay to weigh as much as me. I know we're in a world where we talk about how, you know, you can be big and beautiful, and I, I, I don't think you need to be a stick to be healthy. Like, there's plenty of people that can have some extra pounds and be fine. It's okay to have a little extra weight. I... Even even where like science says that you're obese, I think sometimes that's a bit different because every person is different, right? So the science can say you're obese, but if your body carries the weight well and you don't have any adverse health effects, I think that's fine. But I'm I'm not. That's not where I'm at, guys. I'm a big boy. Um, 
I've weighed less than this just two years ago on this channel. I was almost 200 pounds. I'm like 80 pounds heavier than that today. It's time to get serious. And starting January 1st, I'm, I'm back on a, a, a more strict but more realistic diet. Uh, it's not one of those fad diets or anything. You don't do that. You just eat better, eat healthier, watch your calories. And then I'm going to be uh, back going on my daily walks like I was back when I had my heart attack. We don't want that to happen again, right, guys? Um, if you didn't know I had one, this was, I don't want to re really revisit. This is like three years ago, but I don't want it to happen again um, due to my weight. So I am going to uh, go back on my three to four mile walks every day. Even when it's cold out, it is what it is. I don't have a treadmill. Uh, and I'll probably start a little extra cardio with Ring Fit Adventure and then do some some light, some light training. Um, I've talked to like Paul Gale and some other, uh, you know, more fitness oriented people in the past about what that training is going to be. Um, and I just never really got around to, to following through with that. Um, but I'm serious. Uh, I'm supposed to get married next year. We'll see. We don't even have the date locked in yet. So we'll see if it actually goes through next year, but, um, it's not really even about that. It's just about being healthier, being more energetic, being more myself. I work a job where I'm sitting in these Ewan racing chairs all the time and as comfortable as these chairs are, maybe they're a little too comfortable because I don't get out of them enough. Um, so I'm, I'm very serious about it. I, I know I've said I'm serious about this stuff before. I know that I've been in this cycle of I lose weight, I gain weight, I lose weight. This is what most, I mean, I, I feel like I'm the most honest person about this uh, out there in that my cycle of losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight is pretty normal. And I don't think people talk about that enough. You focus so much on failing rather than realizing, hey, losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight. That That's pretty normal when people are trying to lose. It's 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 once you're losing weight to keep it off. Like Even if you fall off, like let's say I get down to 200 pounds again. By the way, I want to get lower than 200 pounds. I want to get down to like 160. But let's say I get down to 200 pounds. The key thing is even if I fall off the diet and I stop losing weight, it's making sure I don't put the weight back on, right? Don't gain it back. Don't lose what you've already gained. Um, don't let depression and, and, and other things throw you off course. So I know this is the long talk just to talk about losing weight, but that it, it honestly is a very serious goal that is going to both help my mental state of mind, my physical body and help me produce even better content. Plus, you know, a better looking Nate. I hear, I hear being someone who is slightly attractive on camera works. <laughs> it makes more people want to watch. I don't know. You got spawn wave out there rocking like an eight pack. So I know he doesn't use it to, to make his videos blow up, but I mean, he did post that, that, that shirtless picture on Twitter once and no one's ever going to let him forget it. <laughs> so anyways, guys, Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime. Uh, I think this is it for 2022. I don't think there's any other videos coming today. Uh, so I'll see you in 2023.